so today I want to talk about the YouTube algorithm and I know it's kind of a topic that like everyone talks about and like there are about 20 million videos on it but I thought I'd try to do something a little bit different that I haven't seen before so either it hasn't been done or I just didn't look for it correctly. So YouTube actually released a research paper talking about their recommendation system which was submitted to a uh it looks like quite a like high-ranking recommendation system conference where obviously they don't go into too much detail about their system because otherwise it'd be too easy uh, but they do sort of explain how it works so I'm gonna try to do my best to explain it without assuming any prior knowledge about AI or machine learning or uh, you know maths or anything so yeah like there are some things that I'm probably gonna just like ignore and like some technical details that if you are interested in you are more than welcome to go out and read it um, I'm just gonna stay give a very high level overview of the paper and the system because it's actually really cool the paper was actually submitted in 2016 so it's been kind of a while and I actually did know about it like back in 2016 and that's about exactly when I started my undergraduate degree so I didn't understand much of it, but what I understood, I was like, wow, that's pretty fucking cool. So three years later, here we are, you know, I'm freshly graduated from AI and uh, now I'm a master's student. So I feel like I know a little bit more, even though I'm still, I feel still as dumb. So let's get into it. But before we start, uh, I need to define some like key terms so that I can like refer to them afterwards. So the paper is called Deep Neural Networks for YouTube Recommendations. So we need to define what a neural network is. It's basically an algorithm that aims to estimate a function based on some like data. Basically you have a bunch of data and like the expected output and you're trying to find the relation between the two. That's pretty much what it does. Let's hop onto Google Images because like they have some really nice pictures of it. Obviously this is a Wikipedia page, but uh, so if you look at this, you can see that the input, you know, you got all the little red circles, right? And then you have a layer in the middle with the blue circles and then an output layer with green circles. So essentially each little circle is what we call a neuron and it performs a certain computation. It applies a transformation to the input, you know, imagine a bunch of numbers. So it's just going to like, you know, you know, like uh, multiply it and like add stuff to it or whatever it is that it's doing. And it's also going to apply a certain weight to uh, the data. So the way this works is that it will learn from the data because you're going to give it a bunch of samples to train on uh, and then at the end when it spits it back out you're going to take what the network spit out and you know the actual answer and compare the two and based on the difference between the two you're going to be able to change the weights inside of the neurons so each circle so that's a neural network like the base neural network and a deep neural network is exactly that but with way more layers in the middle so yeah more hidden layers uh, that's what they're called so it's basically just a more complex version of it so now that we've defined this uh we should we can get to the whole paper so i have my uh, little set of notes in front of me so basically their whole system works with having two networks working together um, well, one after the other, really. Uh, the first network is one called candidate generation. So here by candidate, they mean videos. So basically this one is, is reducing the millions of videos to YouTube to like a hundred of them. And then you have another network called candidate ranking, which is going to take these hundred videos and like rank them so that, you know, on your recommendation feed, you don't have like a hundred videos. So the candidate generation, the way it essentially works is it performs a broad personalization via collaborative filtering by what they mean is that say, for example, what YouTube knows about me is that I watched a bunch of uh, gaming videos this week and that I am a female and that I'm 20 years old and they're going to have like another profile, another user who's similar to me who watched this video that I haven't seen. So they're going to be like, Hey, you know what? This person probably, you know, like, you know, I'm probably going to be interested in whatever this person saw because we're very similar. So it's going to get pushed to me. So that's basically what collaborative filtering is. And then the candidate ranking is just going to take this hundreds of videos from the collaborative filtering and try to fine tune it to be more like about me personally. So it's a list of best recommendations, essentially. So the way the candidate generation network works is they kind of consider it to be uh, extreme multi-class classification problem. So what's a classification problem? It's basically when you're trying to predict a class uh, as opposed to like a continuous value. 
So say I'm trying to predict, you know, the kind of weather it's going to be tomorrow, like if it's going to be sunny or cloudy or rainy, like those are all different classes. But if I were to be predicting, you know, the actual number of the temperature, like the degrees, then that would not be a classification problem. So here you can, I, you can maybe like, you know, have it the intuition as to why it's an extreme classification problem, but you just consider every single video on YouTube to be uh, a class. So the correct class that it would predict is the video that you're gonna like. Obviously, like it's kind of hard to tell like whether it was correct or not, but here are their criteria as they're gonna explain it later is basically if you like watch the video till the end then that means that it was the correct choice so it's also important to note here which is what they say that they don't use like the explicit signs of you liking a video they kind of use more implicit signs like you know how much time you spent watching the video and you know if you clicked off because if you were, were just going through like likes and comments that is pretty easy and it's kind of easy to like like fake it sort of so then they also talk about the issue of what about new stuff coming up because obviously as with the with models like these the issue is that since it's trained to predict you know new stuff based on old stuff it's always going to kind of have a preference for the stuff that it's seen before and you want videos to be able to become viral and to have the you know new stuff coming out popping up like the hot new thing because otherwise people are just going to get bored right so they kind of feed the age of the video as data into that the model is going to take into account so that way they get time dependent popularity instead of just like overall popularity it's like how popular it is like with regards to its age so then there's also the issue of what about if some users are way more active than other people since it's a collaborative filtering method then you know the people who are watching youtube videos all day every day they're going to be influencing a whole bunch of people which is which would be kind of an issue so they also average each user's like i guess yeah, input and how much they matter out to counterbalance that effect and finally they talk about uh predicting the next watch specifically and not like any random watch it's like you've seen all these videos this is what should come next this is what you should watch next that's kind of what it is rather than like you've seen a bunch of videos you might as well watch this one whether it's like right now or next or like you know after you've seen another video it's really talking about that one because otherwise you would come up with issues like uh, say you search Taylor Swift. Um, that's actually the example in the paper. That's not even for me. Uh, <laughs> then it would kind of just push out another video that's on the search page of Taylor Swift. And I mean, there's a reason why you didn't click on that one in the first place. So uh, yeah, it's really about like, you've already seen this one. Let's give you something else. Uh, so they have a nice little diagram over here of basically what happens. Em embeddings, by the way, uh, say embedded here. Embeddings is basically how you like turn it into a vector. So all the videos that you've watched, it's being averaged out, included in there. The stuff that you've searched for, same. Geographic, I'm assuming they mean like your location, you know, like uh, if you're in France, probably gonna give you more French videos. And then obviously the age and the gender. Uh, Relu or Relu or however it's pronounced. Um, this is just a function, we can kind of just ignore it, you know, details, details. Uh, and then when you're training, softmax is a type of function, so they're retrieving like class probability, so like the probability that uh, the upcoming video, like this one is the right one, this one is the right one, so you know, for the millions of videos, when it's serving to the users, it, it doesn't have time to do all of that, so what it does it is actually just looks at the nearest neighbor, instead of retrieving every single class probability, it just takes like the, the last state of the hidden state uh if you guys remember from the previous neural network thing and it's just going to look at the nearest neighbor because they're all all going to be same dimensionality vectors so they're all going to be mapped to a space say if for example it's like dimension two which obviously it won't be but picture imagine it is then you can just like map it up on a graph and you could just look at like the nearest neighbors to retrieve like the hundred ones or top n or however many you want so that about wraps it up for the canada generation model and now i'm going to talk a bit about the ranking model which essentially has the exact same architecture except that this time it uses regression which is just a different algorithm than neural networks you can look it up if you're interested in it i'm not really going to go into it but feel free to so here it takes what the canada generation model spit back out and it's trying to create like a final ranking to see what's gonna appear on your feed. So they say in the paper that the final ranking is constantly being tuned, but as a general rule, uh, they're looking at a function of expected watch time per impression or per click. 
so that's what they're basically trying to optimize trying to aim for just how long you're gonna watch whatever like the video that is gonna throw out to you like the the more likely you are to watch more of this video then it's gonna get it's gonna rank higher on your recommendations that's why people keep on saying watch time is important like it's literally from there like they have said it themselves so they also talk about how they need to take into account lots of different features and it's very complicated so they have to be tuned by hand they there's a whole section on feature engineering here uh, so they don't, you know, go that much into detail about it, but basically they're going to take into account a user's previous interaction with the item and similar other similar items. Say if there's a video from a channel that you're subscribed to that's being posted, but you haven't watched like any of the last 15 videos this channel posted, then it's probably not going to get pushed out to you because of how you interacted with that channel and videos that were like similar to it being that guy's past uploads. So it also takes into account the stuff from the Canada Generation Network, like where it came from and the score that the Canada Generation uh, gave to that specific video. Uh, and so all of that is taken into account in this, in the ranking model, where the entire goal is to just predict the watch time, as I said before. And another way they also kind of do that, I guess that's kind of details, but I thought it was pretty cool. They wait each video's watch time, like expected watch time, if uh, it's a negative watch time, the expected negative watch time, then it just means that you won't click on it, or at least that's what the system thinks. And it's just that way, the videos that are gonna provide more watch time are just gonna be like stronger in the overall output. So I thought it was a pretty smart way of doing it. So this is just a little diagram of the system. It's very similar to the architecture we saw before. Not really gonna go into the details of it because there's just, you know, stuff that I haven't really talked about. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for uh, the paper. There's a lot of really cool shit happening here. And it's uh, honestly a really complex system. Like, even if they did give us all the data, which, you know, ridiculous, why would they? But even if they did, there is no way anyone would be able to reproduce it unless you have, like, crazy amounts of computation available to you. Because just training stuff like that is, is, is big. Is really big. Like, uh, just to give, like, a rent, like, an example, I, for my bachelor thesis, I was training a, uh, deep neural network for to predict between 256 classes and that took 30 hours on a machine that I rented from Amazon Web Services and that's already like really not a lot and it was really not that complex of a network uh, and I think I had like uh, 50,000 training samples which is not that much here we're talking like millions of classes and millions of training samples like it is absolutely crazy you would not be able to reproduce it in one weekend and have it run on your little computer at home so it's it's really cool it's really impressive and i think that you know how much time i've wasted on youtube is a testament to how good their system is so yeah anyways uh thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video or if you learned something and if you at least found it fun to watch then you know leave it a thumbs up and maybe i'll see you in a next video when the youtube algorithm decides to push this video to your feed. Oh,